Welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about volumes by slicing, the disc method, and the washer method. So before I get into actually drawing anything here and start writing some mathematics up on the board, let's just talk for a second about what's happening. If I have a shape and I want to know the volume of that shape, then there are some ways that I can estimate that. And the way that I want to estimate it is by chopping it up into pieces. And so I'm just going to start with a simple shape. And let's say that we had like a football shape. So let me just draw like a football shape. Um, here's my football and you can kind of see uh, this football shape. And you can notice that if I started cutting it up into pieces, and I started looking at the cross sections of that shape, all of the cross sections of that shape would be circles. And any time that we have this situation where all of the cross sections are similar or the same shape, then uh, we have an easy way that we can compute the volume of that shape. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop these up into little I guess you could say little cylinders, like think of it this way. There's a little cylinder sitting right there. And what if I chop this football up into little cylinders, just like I chop up area under the curve into little rectangles, I'll chop this volume up into little cylinders, and then I'll add up the cylinders. Or maybe I'm chopping them up into little squares or into little triangles or whatever the case may be. When I chop these things up and then I add together all of these little cylinders, as I let the width of those little cylinders go to zero, I get the actual volume of the shape. Now let me write something down for you. So here's a little definition. So definition the volume of a solid that's known to be integrable <clears throat> from uh, x equals a to x equals b is V, or the volume, is inter equal to the integral from A to B of A of X dx. Okay, and what I mean by this A of X is A of X is the area of a cross section at the value X. Okay, so if I take Let's say that this is on an x, y axis here, and this is a point x. Well, what is the area of this circle at x? That's the function that goes into your integral. So what we're going to do is we're going to find what is the area of a cross section, and then put that area of a cross section at x into the integral and integrate from A to B. And that's how we're going to find the volume uh, using cross-sectional areas. All right, let's consider another situation. Let's say that I have my X and my Y axis and I have a small little square sitting on top of my X axis. And now what I wanna do is imagine that I take a hold of that x-axis with my fingers and I start to spin the x-axis around. So that little square starts spinning around the x-axis. The way that I write this on the axis to say I'm spinning that object is I draw a little arrow spinning around the x-axis to tell me now take that object, spin it around, and think about it in your head what would happen if I took that square and I spun it around the x-axis. What shape would form? And the shape that would form is a cylinder and it would look like this.
right? So I take this shape, I spin it around the x-axis, and I would get this cylinder. Now, the question is, what is the volume of this object? Well, we might know what the volume of a cylinder is. Um, it is pi r squared h. And another way of thinking about that, though, is what's the area of every cross-section of this cylinder? Well, the area of every cross-section is the area of a circle. What's the area of a circle? The area of a circle is pi r squared. So we have the area, the cross-sectional area, times the height, which is like if you thought of this as a and this as b, we're taking the integral from a to b of pi r squared. Now, this doesn't just work for a little shape like this. Let me draw something else. So let's say that we took a more interesting shape. I say I take this shape and I spin it around the x-axis. When I take this more interesting shape and I spin it around the x-axis, I get some weird looking thing. Let me try to draw it real quick. So something like this, where the cross sections look like this. But one thing we can see real quick is no matter where I cut this thing, I get a circle. So if I want to find the volume of this thing, and I know that this is a point A and this is a point B, then what I want to do is I want to, if I'm trying to find volume, then I want to take the integral from A to B of the cross-sectional area A of x dx. Well, what is that? The cross-sectional area of any one of these is a circle. And what's the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. So we want to take the integral from A to B of pi times the radius squared. Well, the radius, look at one of these circles over here. The radius is right there. Over here, the radius is right here. But that's just the functional value. So in other words, what goes in here is whatever the radius of one of these little cross-sectional circles is. So I'm going to say that that's r of x quantity squared dx whatever the radius of the cross-section of that circle is. So in this case, that would just be the functional value. In some other cases, it might be something different. But this is what we call the disk method, okay? Because when I spin something around the x-axis, all of the cross-sections look like disks or circles whichever you like to think of it as. And the way that you can figure out what should go on the inside of the integral for the disk method is, well, what's the area of a disk? Or what's the area of a circle? Pi r squared. And what goes inside? Pi r squared. So let's uh, write this down. This is called the disk method. And the disk method says that the volume of a shape where you spin and your cross sections are disks is equal to the integral from a to b of pi times the radius, we'll call it r of x, squared dx. In other words, it's the integral from a to b of pi r squared dx. We call that the disk method. And I'll show you several examples of the disk method in problems that you can watch later. 
All right, now let's consider the case where we're still spinning a square around the x-axis, but this time the square is not setting directly on the axis. It's actually raised a little bit off of the axis. So I'm still taking that square and I'm spinning it around the x-axis, but now what would the shape be since it's lifted off of the axis a little bit. And uh, if you spun it, you'd get something that looked sort of like this. And then there would be a hole in the middle. Oops. And you'd get something like this. And so this looks like, well, it is a cylinder with a cylinder cut out of the middle. All right? And uh, so there's a hole through the middle of this object. Uh, and, but if you take a cross section at any point here, you take a cross section, what would it look like? Well, if you were to lay it flat, it would just be this sort of a shape. That's the cross section of any one of these looks like a washer shape. So the middle is cut out. So uh, we get washers at every cut and we have a new method uh, where we use washers instead of discs. So notice that if I were to uh, find the volume of this shape, one way that I could do it is I could look at taking, uh, let me see, taking a nice cylinder like this and subtracting out the little cylinder that's in the middle. So if I took the big cylinder and I took out the little cylinder, then I would get the volume of this shape that looks like a washer shape. Okay? So this is how we're going to go about figuring out these types of problems, is I want to take the outside shape and subtract out the inside shape. All right, in this case, uh, let me give you another example here. Let's say that instead of having just a square, I had two functions. So let's say I have a function here, uh, I have a function here, and I want to take that shape and I want to spin it around the x-axis. Now, let's call this top line right here, I'll call that f of x, and this bottom line here, I'm going to call that g of x. If I spin this shape around the x-axis, then I get something that looks like this. All right, so after spinning this around the x-axis, I get this shape. Um, and you notice again, a hole is cut out of the center of this shape. So notice that this is the big shape uh, where the sides are slanted and then I cut a cylinder shape out of the middle. So in other words, this is kind of like this big shape. minus this little cylinder. Right? So I just take the volume in the big shape and subtract the volume in the little shape. But both of these, every cross section of this big shape is 
a disc. Every cross section of this little shape is a disc. So this is just a disc method problem. This is just a disc method problem. And so I combine the two together and I get what's called a washer problem. Because every cross section here, if I were to slice this, looks like a washer. All right. How do I compute the area of this one? How do I compute the uh, I'm sorry. How do I compute the volume of this guy? How do I compute the volume of this guy? Well, the volume of the first one is equal to the integral. Let's say that this is A and this is B. It's the integral from A to B of you always, uh, if I'm figuring out this one, this function that I spun was f of x. So this is going to be pi times r, and the radius in this case is all the way up to this top function. So it's going to be f of x squared dx. And then I said, let's subtract this other disk method problem. So now I'm going to subtract the integral from a to b of pi times g of x squared dx. Combining these two together, I get that my volume would be equal to the limits of integration are the same, so I can combine this into one integral. It's the integral from a to b of pi times f of x quantity squared minus g of x quantity squared dx. And this that I'm boxing in, this is what we call the washer method. So if all of the cross sections of your shape look like washers, this is how you're going to find the volume. Remember that f of x in this case is the outer radius. g of x in this case is the inner radius. So it's pi times the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared dx. Now let's look at some examples. <laughs> 